But we continue talking about the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer, learning to pray like Jesus. I mentioned a couple of times that uh, Jesus and his disciples spent a lot of time together during his three years of earthly ministry. And one of the things, no doubt, that they spent a lot of time hearing was Jesus praying having conversation with his father. And they became so enamored, so thrilled. My guess is, just making a supposition here, but using my imagination and just thinking what that must have been like, my guess is that every time they saw Jesus bow his head, knowing that he was about to pray, my guess is that their ears perked up and their attention was focused. Because I just imagine that the conversations that Jesus had with his father were so special that they couldn't wait till the next time Jesus prayed. And so, when they had a moment, they said, Jesus, your prayers are so amazing. The conversations you have with God are so thrilling to us. Would you please teach us to pray? And so Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. I don't believe Jesus was giving us exact words, although we have the exact words written down in Scripture. As we've learned so far in our study of the Lord's Prayer, I think what Jesus was doing is giving us kind of a framework. He, he was saying, here are some things you need to recognize when you pray. When you have a conversation with God, here are some things you need to be aware of. When you say these words, let them trigger these other thoughts and contemplations in your heart and in your spirit. And so he said, this is just a model. This is just an example. But use this as a guide as you pray. Would you stand with us as I read out of Matthew chapter 6? You can follow along in your Bible or on the screen. Jesus said, when you pray, Pray it this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. May your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, teach us this morning to pray. And may your Holy Spirit in this place move, convict, convince, draw, May your Holy Spirit do in this place the work that only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, so today, we talk about that phrase, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, this particular phrase tells us about God's provision. We've looked so far, so far at our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we've learned lots of things about the Father in those sermons. But today, we're going to learn about his provision, because this phrase, give us this day, our daily bread, tells us that our Father is a providing Father. He is a Father who cares that our needs, all of our needs, are provided for. He is a God of provision. 
There are three things about this passage of Scripture that I really want you to see and I really want you to appreciate. But before we get there, I want you to notice how interesting it is that after this high and lofty request last week for the glorious kingdom of God to come to earth, we are next to pray for something that seems so meager in comparison, our daily bread. Notice the juxtaposition. Notice how those two things are put up next to each other. The glorious kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This prayer that all that we know about heaven, that all that we know about the kingdom, that all that we know about the wonderful things of God, we're praying for those things to leave heaven and make their way to earth. And in the very next phrase... And by the way, give us some bread to eat, too. It just doesn't seem to go together, does it? But understand that Jesus knew that we could not carry on the work of the kingdom without nourishment and provision. Jesus understood that. Jesus understood, hey, if if we're going to pray for heaven to come down, if we're going to pray for our work to be the kingdom's work, that we could not do the kingdom's work without nourishment and provision. Why? Because the work of the kingdom is hard work. You can't do the work of the kingdom for very long on an empty stomach. Jesus understood that. In other words... The fire must be fueled. The fire must be fueled. Uh, most of us have some experience, at least once or twice in our life, probably uh, most every summer, in being somewhere where there's a campfire. And most of us are intelligent enough to understand that if you start a fire, and you let it burn for a while, and all the fuel, all the wood burns up, eventually the fire goes away. Well, what Jesus is teaching us here is this, that if we're going to do the kingdom's work, if we're going to be on fire for the kingdom of God, then there must be some fuel that is continually feeding the fire. Otherwise, we get burned out. Otherwise, we get weary. Otherwise, we run out of energy. We run out of sustenance. And after all, Paul has instructed us when we're doing kingdom's work. He says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And the only way not to faint is to keep the fire fuel. And the only way to keep the fire fuel is for God to give us his daily bread to nourish us, to provide our needs, so that we continue to do the work of the kingdom. Now those three things I promise to tell you about. The first is this. I want you to notice, first of all, the sovereign source. The sovereign source. It is God who is the source of our daily bread. Now I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to misunderstand this. Because we live in a culture that believes that you and I are responsible for providing our own daily bread. Most of us were raised in homes with good work ethics where we were taught that we pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and we make our own way and provide our own living and we work hard. If we work hard enough, we'll have the things we need. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, we have to acknowledge the fact that there is a sovereign source for all that we need. There is a sovereign source for our daily bread. There is a sovereign source for all the needs that we need provided in our life. It all ultimately comes from God. Scripture teaches us that all good gifts come from above. God is our source. And you may think an employer is your source. You may think a paycheck is your source. You may even think the government is your source. But the truth is that God is ultimately your source. 
It's an interesting word here, this word give. Give us this day our daily bread. It is the Greek word didomi, which means, among other things, to draw from and then pour out. God gives us our daily bread as he draws from his resources and then pours out on us. Now, I want you to get that picture. Because when we're praying, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. What we're saying is, God, I acknowledge the fact that you are my sovereign source. You are my provider. And what I'm asking you to do, Lord, is to dip into your resources, all that I need, and then pour it out on me. That's what we're really praying. God, give me this day our daily bread. Give me what I need. Provide for me all that is necessary in order to fuel the fire that will do the kingdom's work. And Lord, I have no problem believing you can do that because I know that those resources are going to be drawn from your bounty. Those resources are going to be drawn from the bounty and the supply of heaven and that you're going to dip into your well and then you're going to pour out upon me all that I need. Man, that changes the way we pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Because what we're asking for is not simply a meager loaf of bread. What we're asking for is all that God has available at his disposal to meet every need we have. Look at those uh, couple of scripture references. In 1 Corinthians 10, 26, it says this about those resources. For the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. The psalmist said it this way. The Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I've shared with you before that my teacher in Sunday school growing up would always augment that verse and say he even owns the thousand hills. You see, it's all his. Now, look what scripture says in Malachi 3.10 about how he pours out his blessings. He says, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Folks, he is our sovereign source who draws from his resources and then pours out the windows of heaven, all that we need. And I want you to notice as we look at those scriptures that his resources never, ever run out. They are inexhaustible, they are indescribable, they are incorruptible. And so when I pray, give us this day our daily bread, what I'm saying is, Lord, I'm trusting that today, in order to do the work of the kingdom, in order to fuel the fire, I'm trusting that today you will dip into your inexhaustible, indescribable, incorruptible resources, that you own it all, that it all belongs to you, that there is nothing I need that you can't provide. I'm trusting that you're going to dip into those resources, open the windows of heaven, and pour out upon me all that I need in order to do the work of the kingdom today. Because I know that you've already instructed me to pray for your will to be done, for your kingdom to come, for it to look on earth like it does in heaven. And in order for that to happen, I'm going to have to do the hard work of the kingdom. And if I'm going to do the hard work of the kingdom, it's going to take some sustenance and provision and nourishment that only you can provide because you own it all and it's all yours. And you're going to dip into that supply and you're going to pour it out on me so that I can do exactly what you've asked me to do. Does that change how you pray? Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Guys, that means that there's nothing you need that God cannot provide because He is our sovereign source. I want you to notice, second of all, in this passage of Scripture, we see not only that word that indicates that our source is sovereign, that God is the source the sovereign source. But notice secondly, the restricted recipient. The restricted 
recipient because Jesus said, pray like this, give us this day our daily bread. The promise of provision is not for everyone. I'm going to stop there for a second because you need to let that sink in. Although God is a good God, and he does teach us that sometimes it rains on the just and the unjust alike, and there are certainly wicked people in this world who are beneficiaries of God's mercy and God's grace and God's provision. His promise is for us. His promise is is restricted to us. You gotta lay your political correctness aside sometimes and understand that God's word is real truth. In the truest sense of the word, we are not all God's children. We are all God's creation. But there's a difference between being God's creation God's child. And so when we read this prayer, we have to understand that what Jesus is saying is pray like this. Lord, dip into your resources and pour out upon your children the provision that is needed for them to do the work of the kingdom. God's first priority is his children. And I can go to my Father with absolute confidence because I am His child. Now, it shouldn't be hard for us to understand this, and yet we make it hard. As a father, those of you who are fathers, understand this. Although I want everyone to have all that they need, although my desire as a human being is for people's needs to be provided. And many times during the week, people call our home. They call our cell phones. They call the church. And they have needs. And I try the very best that I can to meet those needs, to, to furnish those folks with the things that they need. I don't want anybody to do without. But I have to tell you something. That the greatest priority in my life as a father is my children. Because they're mine. And God's greatest priority in His provision is His children. That doesn't make us special in any other way than the fact that we have, by grace and mercy, come into His family. We've been adopted as children of God. That doesn't mean that God likes us better than somebody else. That doesn't even mean that, that God had us on some kind of pedestal and, and treats us the way that he does it. That, that's not what it's about. It's the fact that once we have become a part of the family of God, we become the Father's responsibility in lots of ways. But in one way that we're talking about today, it's his responsibility to provide all of our needs. And so I can come to him with a special kind of confidence knowing that I belong to him, that I am his child, and that he is my father. Look what Psalm 37 says. David said, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children ever begging bread. Why is that? Because, because we're his children. He makes sure that our needs are provided. Give us this day our daily bread. You see, I can pray for God's provision with an absolute faith and assurance that he will hear my prayer because I know that he is a loving Heavenly Father who made me, remember our first sermon? The procreator. Who provides for me, he is a provider. And who protects me. Because I am his child and because you are his children, God loves us in a special way that obligates him to provision. 
So I don't ever have to be ashamed when I go to the Father. I don't ever have to be timid when I go to the Father. I don't ever have to, to, to be this, this person who is mealy-mouthed and, 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 and has such a, a reluctant spirit about coming to the Father. I can come boldly before the throne, the Scripture says, because I am His child and because He is my Father, and I can say, Father... <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. You've asked us to do the work of the kingdom. We need to do the work of the kingdom. We desire to do the work of the kingdom. We want that fire to be fueled. And the only way that will happen is if you provide all that we need. And because I am your child, I know that I can come to you today with absolute assurance that you will provide every need that I have. Paul said he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. What that means is that because I am coming through Christ and he is coming back at me through Christ, because I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior and I am now in relationship with God as a child of God, because of Jesus Christ, he then will be my provider and supply all of my needs according to his inexhaustible resources. Does that change the way you pray when you pray, give us this day? <clears throat> Our daily prayer. But notice one last thing this morning. Not only the sovereign source, the restricted recipient, but I want you to notice the daily dependence. God's provision is promised only on a daily basis basis. Give us this day our daily bread. Not our weekly bread, not our monthly bread, not our yearly bread, our daily bread. Do you remember God's provision of manna in the wilderness? In the wilderness, when the children of Israel were wandering, they complained that they were hungry, they didn't have anything to eat, and so God said, I'll give you something to eat. I'll give you manna, bread from heaven. Daily bread, if you will. And he said, here's what you do. You go out every morning, you take your little basket, and you gather the daily bread. You gather the amount of manna that you're going to need for the day. No more, no less. Take all that you need for the day, for your family's provision. Don't take any more. Don't take any less. Take just what you need for today. Now, Scripture tells us in the Old Testament that if they began to gather up more than they needed so that they didn't have to go off tomorrow and gather up more manna, overnight it would spoil and rot. Got maggots. It was no good. The next day they'd get up to eat. They still had to go out and gather the manna the next day, no matter how much they gathered the day before. It was only good for one day. Except... Before the Sabbath, this is how they knew it was God on the Sabbath, they would collect two days' worth on the sixth day and on the seventh. They didn't have to go out and work because they kept it holy, and then it didn't go bad on the Sabbath. God's provision was for daily bread. And so when Jesus says, this is how you should pray, give us this day our daily bread. They knew exactly what Jesus was talking about because they knew the history of the Israelites. They knew about the journey through the desert. They understood about manna. They knew about all of that. And so these folks knew exactly what Jesus was saying when he said, give us this day our daily bread. Enough for today and no more. All that I need, but no more than I need. It always came one day at a time. Why? Because God knows if we can store it up, we'll forget about Him until we need something else. Think about it. You've all experienced this, and we're all guilty of it. As long as there's plenty, we have a tendency to forget about God, don't we? When we have all the money we need, when all the bills are paid, when everybody's healthy, when everything is as it should be in this world, we have a tendency to drift from God. All of us have that tendency. 
when things are exactly right, when there's lots of money in the bank account and all the bills are paid, when nobody's got the sniffles, nobody's got a bad diagnosis, nobody's having medical problems, everybody's working that wants to work, the children are behaving, there's no rebellion in the house. Mom and dad are getting along great. As long as all as it should be, we have a tendency to forget all about God. But what happens when there's a relationship problem in the house? What happens when our teenager runs away from home? What happens when we find out that one of our kids is involved in something that they shouldn't be? What happens when we get our paycheck on Friday and inside that paycheck there's a pink slip that says after next Friday you won't have a job anymore? What happens when you get to the end of the month and you've still got bills left and no money left? What happens when you go to the doctor and the doctor says the prognosis isn't good. You have six months to live. When those kinds of things happen in our life, it drives us to our knees, doesn't it? It turns us to God. Because when there's no one else who can supply our needs, when there's no one else who can heal our body, when there's no one else who can reconcile us to our children, when there's no one else who can deliver our family from addiction, when there's no one else who can put a marriage back together, when there's no other way to look but up, we have a tendency to turn to God. And God knows that about us. He knows that's our tendency. He knows that's how we're bent. And so he knows that if he gives us enough for the rest of our life that we will drift from God, we will forget about him, and we won't come back anymore. And so therefore, Jesus says, pray like this. Pray that God will give you for a enough to do you today and no more. That way tomorrow morning you've got to come back and you've got to ask for your daily bread again. And the next day you've got to come back and ask for your daily bread again. And the next day you've got to come back and ask for healing. The next day you've got to come back and ask for a job. The next day you've got to come back and ask that that relationship be put back together. The next day you've got to come back and ask for your child to return home. See, God knows if there's never a need, we'll forget about him. He knows that there are daily needs and we're forced to pray for daily bread. He will always be on our mind and in our heart. God's not being mean. He loves us so much that he doesn't ever want us. Listen to this. God doesn't ever want you to wonder more than a day's journey away from I want to say that again, because it's pretty good. It just came to me. <laughs> God doesn't ever want you to journey more than one day's journey away from Him. See, I can't get too far in a day. And God knows that. If He gives me two, or three, or four, or a week, or a month's worth of daily nourishment, spiritual nourishment. He knows that in 30 days I can do some pretty big damage. He knows that in 30 days I can wander pretty far. He knows that in 30 days I can get pretty far away from him. In 30 days my memory gets pretty foggy. But if I have to come in every day and say, Father, give us this day our daily bread, I can't get too far. our sovereign source to a restricted recipient his children that's what God wants us to understand a daily dependence on him so that we're always in a position to have to rely on his provision now if I understand that then I understand that my prayer starts sounding like this. Rather than just our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Instead of just that, this is what my prayer begins to sound like. Our Father, the one who made us, protects us and provides for us. We know that you alone are eternal 
eternally able to do in the now what needs to be done. We know that because you are holy, your plans and your purpose for us are good and your promises are reliable. Go ahead. We pray for your kingdom to be revealed and reflected in this world, just like it is in heaven. We ask that you continue to remove our selfish ambitions so your will is not opposed. We ask you continue to break our hearts over sin so our holy lives will allow your will to be accomplished in our world. And we also ask that you bind Satan from interference with your will in our individual lives, our homes, our children, our nation, and our world. And in order that I might be able to accomplish the kingdom's work, draw from your inexhaustible resources in heaven and pour out upon me all that I need for today so that I will never forget it who my real source is. So change the way you pray. Oh, my friends, it ought to change the way we pray every day. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done right here on earth. Give us this day the awareness that we must depend upon you daily for all that we need in order to do the kingdom's work. Oh, what a powerful prayer Jesus is teaching.